All right, folks, so in this video, let's get this over here. All right, folks, so in this video, we're going to talk a little bit about SDR dongles, uh, specifically these two. But I did want to mention, this was one of the first dongles that I bought, and I wanted to just point out that not all dongles are created the same. Um, I've had this for at least 15 years, potentially even longer, and this is actually from the UK, and it is for TV. I don't know if you can see that on there. But this was used over there, and one of my buddies said, hey, you can use these to, uh, as an SDR to record um, stereo or, or FM broadcast, stuff like that. And um, so I started messing around with it, and I just wanted to point out that this actually has, um, I think it's an MTX connector on there, MXC connector maybe, I can't remember, with an adapter. Um, and it's very similar to the other ones, but one of the big problems it has is it doesn't have a TCXO um which is a te or OX, T C O X, the temperature controlled oscillator. So as this thing gets hot and they definitely warm up, uh, it tends to drift its uh, setting frequency setting and doesn't work as well. So I bought this a number of years ago. And I actually have another one, another V3. This is from RTLSDR.com, and I really like this and had uh, a good time using it. Uh, and then I bought this one. This is the newer version. It's the version four. And um, here you go. It's TCXO, not OX. And um, I, I bought this version 4, and I haven't used it yet. And I wanted to do a video talking about the differences between these and what is better. Also, we're going to talk a little bit about some other things that you might want to use. Like, this is an accessory that I've used, and this is a band stop for broadcast band 88 through 108 megahertz. Uh, a lot of times, if you have strong FM station broadcasts near you, it can overload the front ends of your SDR. So a lot of times, it's a good idea to put one of these in line with your SDR and your antenna. The other thing I was going to mention are these little babies. And these have different frequency spans. So this one's 100 kilohertz to 6. This one's 10 megahertz to 6. Th this one does 20 dB of amplification. And I don't remember what this one does. I don't know what it says on there. But I did some videos testing these out. You can check that out. And here's another one, and these are called low noise amplifiers, if I didn't say that. All of these actually have a battery in them, so you can just turn them on when they're going to be in use, and then it powers your device. If these are off, one of the things I've noticed is, is that it can mess up your impedance match between your radio and your antenna. So don't leave these in line if you're not going to, if you're not going to use them. All right, let's move on to the technical portion of the conversation. These are two of the most popular and affordable software-defined radio, SDR, devices available. They're widely used from everything from ham radio to satellite tracking. In this presentation, we'll help you understand the key differences between the V3 and V4 models, including how their internal architecture impacts signal performance across HF and VHF UHF bands. We'll explore which model is best suited to your particular setup. Whether you're battling AM broadcast to overload in an urban area or fine-tuning ADS-B reception in a rural location. By the end, you'll be equipped with the knowledge to confidently choose the right dongle and complement it with ideal accessories for your RF environment. Choosing between the RTL, SDR V3, and V4 often depends on what frequencies you care most about and your local RF conditions. If your main interest is HF reception, whether that's ham bands or shortwave, the V4 is a significantly easier and cleaner choice, thanks to its internal upverter and improved filtering. On the other hand, if your focus is VHF UHF, such as monitoring airband public safety trunk systems or satellites, and you're operating in a relatively clean RF environment, or using older software tools, the V3 remains an excellent option. It's universally compatible and delivers a good sensitivity at higher bands. Regardless of what you choose, both dongles are feature rich and come ready for real world use. They each include a high stability TCXO and SMAF antenna port and rugged aluminum housing. Oh, and a bias T to power LNAs or active antennas. Despite their architectural differences, the RTL SDR V3 and V4 share a solid set of baseline features that make either a compelling entry into software defined radio. Both units are built around the RTL 2832U chipset, enclosed in a sturdy aluminum housing, offering durability and improved electromagnetic interference shielding. Their frequency coverage spans from around 500 kHz to 1.7 GHz, making them versatile for a wide array of listening applications. Each includes a high-stability, temperature-compensated crystal oscillator, TCXO, with about 1 parts per million accuracy, a software-switchable bias T for powering front-end devices, 
and broad compatibility with popular SDR platforms like SDR Sharp, SDR++, GQRX, and others. These shared features form a strong foundation, especially for hobbyists transitioning to more advanced setups. The architectural heart of the V3 dongle is its direct sampling implementation. This design taps into the RTL2832U chip's Q branch to receive HF frequencies, specifically between 0.5 and 30 MHz, without needing an external up converter. While it's a clever and cost-effective solution, it comes with limitations. For one, users must manually switch software modes to enable direct sampling when working with the HF range. And they also need to remember to toggle back and forth for UHF-VHF operations. This added complexity can lead to user error or confusion, especially for beginners. Additionally, direct sampling tends to introduce spurious signals, often around 14.4 MHz, and can be vulnerable to overload and intermodulation in the presence of strong local AM or FM broadcast stations, unless external filters are used. Despite these caveats, the V3's HF reception can be very effective with proper filtering and careful gain settings. Unlike the V3, the RTL SDR Blog V4 opts for a more refined architectural approach by integrating an internal HF up converter. This design converts low frequency signals upward before they hit the RTL2832U demodulator, actively avoiding many of the artifacts associated with direct sampling. The upverter path allows the HF reception to behave more like UHF and VHF tuning from the user's perspective. No need for special mode toggling or switching between IQ branches. It also unlocks the ability to apply gain adjustments on HF, improving control and signal clarity. Additionally, the V4's redesigned RF front end, including better filtering, results in cleaner HF spectrum with fewer unwanted signals or spurious image. This makes the V4 particularly appealing for users in dense RF environments or those focusing in on shortwave and ham HF bands. A key difference between the RTL SDR V3 and V4 lies in how they handle strong signals and filter out interference. The V3 has a simpler front end design, relying on basic impedance matching and diplexing, which works well in RF quiet locations. However, in urban environments near strong AM or FM transmitters, it's vulnerable to descents, wideband overload, and intermodulation. The V4 addresses these challenges head on with a redesigned input architecture. It features a multi-band triplexer and software-tunable broadcast notch filters. These innovations help suppress strong AM and FM signals before they reach the tuner, greatly enhancing dynamic range and reducing the chances of spurious responses or pumping. The version 4's front end provides noticeably cleaner waterfalls and more stable signal decoding across bands, especially for HF and VHF users operating in congested RF environments. When it comes to HF listening, whether it's amateur radio or shortwave broadcasts, or utility signals, the differences between the V3 and V4 become quite noticeable in practice. The V3, while capable and sensitive, often suffers from image artifacts due to its direct sampling approach. For example, mirrored signals near 14.4 MHz are common, and strong AM broadcast stations can cause overload or intermodulation unless you add external filtering. Additionally, users must manually switch modes in the software to activate HF reception. In contrast, the V4's internal up-conversion architecture and integrated filtering eliminate most of these issues. It offers a much cleaner spectral view, significantly fewer artifacts, and an effortless HF experience without software toggles. For users focused on HF reception, whether casual shortwave listeners or serious ham operators, the V4 presents a clear improvement. For users monitoring VHF and UHF frequencies, whether it's airband, public safety trunking, satellites, or ADSB, both the RTL, SDR, V3, and V4 offer strong performance, but with slightly different advantages. The V3 has a modest edge in raw sensitivity during ideal bench conditions, especially when used with high-quality antennas and clean power. It performs exceptionally well in low RF environments, such as rural settings or when shielding is well-managed. In contrast, the V4 shines in tougher RF environments. Its stronger front-end filtering provides resilience against intermodulation and descents caused by nearby broadcast towers, making it more reliable for urban deployments. For satellite reception, NOAA, Meteor, ISS, and ADSB at 1,090 MHz, both models perform well when paired with good LNAs and band-specific filters, highlighting the importance of the overall RF chain over just the dongle choice. While both the RTL SDR V3 and V4 are compatible with a wide range of SDR software, 
there are critical differences in how they interact with drivers in HF mode settings. The V3 is more universally supported of the two. Almost every SDR application can work with it out of the box. Though RF listening requires you to manually enable direct sampling Q branch mode in software and revert back when tuning in VHF or UHF. In contrast, the V4 needs updated drivers, specifically an up to date libRTL SDR or RTL SDR DLL. Most current applications include these by default, but older or abandoned software may require a manual update. It's important to remember that V4 does not use direct sampling. Activating it in software will result in corrupted or misaligned signals. If you notice any tuning issues or distorted reception on the V4, updating the drivers is usually the fix. On the hardware front, the V3 and V4 dongle share many physical similarities, offering robust and practical designs to stand up well to real-world use. Both draw between 250 and 300 milliamps from the USB port, meaning they'll feel warm but not dangerously hot during extended sessions. This is well within USB 2.0's power specs and doesn't typically require active cooling. Each dongle uses a standard SMAF connector, which is compatible with most SDR gear. However, USB connector types can vary. Some versions come with USB-A plugs, while newer ones may use USB-C. Be sure to check your specific Unix configuration if cable compatibility is a concern. Their solid aluminum casing provides dual benefits, enhanced electromagnetic interference shielding, and efficient heat dissipation. This makes them suitable for even cluttered, interference-prone setups. Here's a condensed view of the key specifications that distinguish the RTL SDR 3 and 4. Both cover approximately 500 kilohertz to 1.7 gigahertz, but the way they handle HF differs fundamentally. V3 uses direct sampling, while V4 integrates an HF upconverter. The RF front end in the V3 is simpler, relying on basic diplexing, whereas the V4 introduces a more sophisticated triplexer and offers software tunable notch filters for AM, FM, and digital airband interference. This gives the V4 an edge in noisy RF environments. The tuner chips also differ. The V3 typically uses an R82OT2, while the V4 uses the newer R828D. Both of these models retain key advantages like a one part per million TCXO, a software switchable bias T at around 4.5 volts, and rugged aluminum cases with SMA connectors. When deciding between the V3 and V4, it's important to align your choice with both your listening goals and RF environment. If your focus is HF listening, like amateur radio and shortwave broadcasts, or utility communications, the V4 is a better option. Its internal up converter and improved filtering make tuning seamless and help eliminate common artifacts. In urban environments with strong AM, FM, and digital airband broadcasts, the V4 also stands out. Its advanced front end and software controlled notch filters make it more resistant to desense and overload than the V3. However, if you primarily monitor VHF and UHF frequencies in rural or low noise areas and use legacy software, the V3 remains a cost effective and broadly supported option. Each model has its strengths and choosing the right one can simplify your setup and improve your SDR experience. Accessories can greatly elevate your RTL SDR dongle experience, especially when tailored to your specific frequency interest in RF environment. For HF monitoring, consider adding an AM broadcast notch filter or bandpass filter to suppress powerful local stations. Long wire or resonant dipole antennas work well, especially when paired with a one-to-one -one choke balance to reduce common mode current at the feed point. In the VHF UHF range, simple add-ons like an FM broadcast notch filter can clean up urban RF clutter. Lightweight LNAs placed close to the antenna can significantly improve weak signal reception. For satellite and ADSB applications, use band-specific filters and low-noise amplifiers tuned to 1090 MHz or 137 through 144 MHz, mounted as close to the antenna as possible. To wrap up, your choice between the 3 and the 4 ultimately comes down to your priorities and environment. If HF listening is a major part of your interest, or you're dealing with urban RF clutter, the V4 provides a better out-of-the-box experience. The V3, on the other hand, continues to shine in simpler use cases. It remains a solid option for VHF and UHF-focused monitoring. Both offer excellent value and expandability. By aligning your SD model choice with your goals and your gear setup, you'll enjoy a smoother and more effective radio listening experience. And with that, I'd like to thank everybody for watching. If you have any questions, comments, suggestions, or recommendations, go ahead and post them below, and I'll do my best to respond.